All right, so this Knife Thoughts video is going to be a first look at the knives um, that I brought back from the 2019 Great Eastern Cutlery Rendezvous. So uh, this was the first year that I went to the Rendezvous um, kind of as Knife Thoughts or um, since Knife Thoughts started. I've been to the past six uh, Rendezvous, including this year starting in 2014. And um, each year I've kind of um, gotten more used to, to what's going on in there and everything. And also last year they started having uh, tents with tables where vendors and, and stuff like that can, and you know collectors and stuff can set up their kni knives and display them and sell them and everything like that. Uh, and so last year that was, there weren't too many people. Um, but then this year they said they were gonna have even more tables and uh, I decided why not go and give out some knife thoughts stickers, talk about knife thoughts and show off uh, some of my knives. Specifically, um, I've, like I said, I've been there the past six years and I've never seen a display of the rendezvous specials. So I'll talk about that, but that's the main reason why I went, uh, decided to, to have a table was to show off uh, my collection of rendezvous specials. Um, like I said, this is just a first look, so I'm not gonna go into super, super depth on any of these knives. But um, if you are interested in them, don't forget to go to knifethoughts.com, subscribe by entering your email so that you get updates when I post new articles and stuff like that. And also follow me on social media at Knife Thoughts. Um, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, even Tumblr. Um, so don't forget to check that out. And we'll move on to the knives. So I'm gonna start with um, a knife that is uh, the, the oldest of the knives that I got. And uh, the reason for that, actually I'll start with the fixed blade. So this knife uh, was one that uh, my dad got for me. Um, he lives nearby and um, I told him he should stop by and see the knives and stuff. And um, so he got this as a gift for me from one of the vendors there. Um, so first off, sometimes people say about my dirty fingernails, this is from opening new knives. Um, GEC knives often have some grinding polish and stuff like that in the uh, nail nick, so it really shouldn't bother you. <laughs> it's it's uh, just from opening the knives, but I just thought I'd mention that since I didn't notice beforehand that that was like that. But that's why that's like that. If you ever see that in my videos, it's often from opening the knives. Anyway, um, this is a knife that was uh, had one of the vendors that had a, a table had, and if you, you'll probably notice that it's a, a similar design to a really well uh, well-known knife. So I'll pull it out and you can see that this is a familiar um, design. Now, as you can see on the sheath and on the, really the, the pile side, not the normal mark side, this knife is made by Relentless Tactical. So the person who I bought this from, his name's Lee, uh, he has or makes Jack Russell Leatherworks, which are who make Greatest from Cutlery's um, leather sheaths and leather products. Um, so, you know, makes really, really nice leather products, especially if you've seen Greatest from Cutlery's new sheaths with the tolling. Um, it's really, they, they do good leather work, really nice sheaths and stuff. Uh, but he also makes some knives and uh, Relentless Tactical is a brand, I haven't been able to find a whole lot of, out about it, but it's a brand that they, you can find sheaths and holsters and stuff by them. Um, but anyway, it's the one of his brands. Um, and so this one is obviously pretty similar to an EC3. Not exactly the same, not a copy, but um, pretty similar. It, uh, so the reason I wanted it is because um, it's all made by him. So he has a, a shop and he, has, uh, he himself uh, cuts these out with a water jet. Then this one was hand ground. Um, so you can see it has a pretty high, it's not necessarily a full flat grind, but a high flat grind. He had some that were CNC'd, but they looked like they had less thin of a grind. Um, he suggested going with the CNC because it looked better, but it looked like this had a thinner grind to me. So I went with this one because I prefer, you know, them to slice well. Um, but hand ground, but then he has a friend who does powder coating, who powder coated them. He CNC's the handles, which this is uh, canvas micarta. So pretty much all made um, by him other than the coating. And he heat treats it, it's 10 10.95 steel. So pretty much all made by him other than the coating, which is done 
you know, nearby. So it's all made in the USA, as you see. Um, and I appreciated that. Uh, and also, if you've followed me for a while, you've seen that I um, had a little bit of a disagreement with EC over how they handled their warranty. Um, if you're interested in that, you can uh, check out my Instagram. It's on there. I don't think it's on the website yet. I might put it up. But um, anyway, basically, one of the co-owners of EC at told me that they didn't want me to buy their knives anymore. So I don't, but I do like the designs. I like that, the, that they're no nonsense and, and pretty uh, straightforward. So I saw this and I got it, or my dad, I saw it and liked it and then my dad got it for me. Um, but this is a little different. It's a little bit more of a sweep, sweeping belly, and it has a clip point rather than just kind of a straight back. I also think that the handle is a little bit different, but um, I can't exactly put my hand uh, finger on where. But anyway, just a really cool knife, one I'm looking forward to testing out, seeing if it, you know, is heat treated well and how it slices and stuff like that. So a cool knife at a good price, made in the USA, um, at least in part by hand, and comes with a nice sheath, uh, Kydex, you know, pressed with a clip that works well on the belt. So um, probably not your, what you were expecting to see from uh, a video about the rendezvous knives, but I'll go with the oldest, uh, GC knife next. So this is at Northfield and you see that it's a 97-6-119. Um, this is an amber jig bone and it's number 23, I think out of 50. I'm not exactly sure how many. Um, I'll have to look that up. But you can see that it's the SFO for Kiefer Cutlery Classics. Um, classic cutlery never goes out of style. This one was actually given to me by Gary Kiefer who um, owns Kiefer Cutlery Classics. Uh, he is a dealer for GEC, but also has been going to the rendezvous um, it, since before I was going. And um, he goes the night before and is always on the porch the whole night. Uh, and I've been doing that a few years. So i um, gotten talking to him and stuff. And um, as I was leaving, he, he's, you know, gave this to me and uh, you know, said to do a review on it and stuff. And so I'm really excited about it actually because I got a 97 um, as the Allegheny Mountain Knife Collectors Association 2019 Club Knife, but I didn't plan to use that one. So I'm really happy to have a 97 that I can use. You can see that it has his um, shield that only he uses. Uh, it has the double pull because it is a Northfield and it's the amber jig bone versus the antique amber jig bone like us, the s several of the 97s had. Really, really nice. This is again, just a, a kind of a sneak peek at these, but um, super nice action. The pull is light, but not too light. Um, I, I actually like it a lot, uh, the, the strength of the pull. Nice action, as you can see, centered well. So I'm just really excited to, to use this one. I did, I did drop the kick a little bit already. Um, it was not proud, but it was just close and I dropped the kick a tiny little bit and I sharpened it. But one I'm really excited about to use. Next, we'll move on to, uh, let's see. Uh, this is the only one that was not restricted directly by GEC of how many you could buy. This is a number 933119 in smooth white bone. So what that is, it's actually one of Charlie Campania's real lamb foot knives, the first um, lamb foot made in America, it seems. You can read the back here, pause and read it if you'd like. Um, but, uh, I wasn't able to, to keep, uh, or get one of these, or I wasn't able to keep one, um, of the normal run. And Charlie always has a bunch of really, really nice, sometimes really old knives with him to sell. So I always, you know, get my knives from the factory and then right away go out and see Charlie. And first off, Charlie had some, a little bit of, um, medical issues recently. So it was just really nice to see him and talk to him. He always has a really, um, jolly kind of uh, atmosphere and, and, and personality. So always nice to see him. Uh, and I actually didn't think I would get one of these. In fact, he said that he hadn't planned to sell this one. He had already sold a, a good number of these because they were in the factory and then brought out actually after I had already seen Charlie. Um, so they didn't have them when I was looking at his knives. Then I heard about it and went and he had already sold as many as he wanted to sell, but he sold me one, which I really appreciate. I bought one of his what, smooth white bone 
um, ancients last year, which were kind of similar in that they were made for the rendezvous like this. Uh, so I was really excited. You can see that it is smooth white bone. This side looks more like they're oiled, uh, smooth oiled bone. It's got a nice like kind of oil color to it. And then this side's a little more blotchy. I actually like the look of both, um, but it's just interesting that they're a little bit uh, mismatched. Uh, but really, really well made. As you can see, no gaps, really well centered. The tip sits deep, which has not been the case on all of the lamb foots that I've seen you know, on the internet and stuff. Uh, that nail nick sits really low, but as long as you do have, you know, at least some uh, fingernail, you can get it, and it has really nice action, really snappy. As you can see, I'll show it snapping uh, to half stop too. Really nice. Um, so just a really nice knife that I was happy to get. Uh, I wanted to get this one because I wanted to do an article on the lamb foot, the history of the lamb foot pattern, the fact that this is the first one made in the United States and everything. I have to say, uh, maybe it'll warm up on me, but I don't love the lamb foot pattern. I think that I like the, the bigger sheep foot a little bit better because you can pinch it, but certainly a really cool knife and one that I'm happy to get to check out and you know write a Knife Thoughts article on. Um, about the history of the pattern and everything. So big thanks to Charlie for that. Next one here is um, a, factory, a special factory assembly. So this is not the rendezvous special. Um, what GEC does is they, do, they make a rendezvous special, which is a restricted, you, it used to be to 30, now it's to 50 knives, and they only sell a certain number of those knives on each day, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Um, I think this year they said they did 20, 20, and 10. Uh, that's the ones that I collect and, and now I don't use, I used them the first few years that I got them, but now I'm not really using them too much. Um, that's the rendezvous special, but then they do these factory special assemblies. They used to call them parts knives, um, but now they call them factory special assemblies. Uh, and this year they had a lot of store knives as the factory special assemblies. They had a lot that weren't, um, but, uh, they had a lot that were. And I got this one because this is a 745116. Um, in 2016, they made the 74 and they made it in stainless. A lot of people like them and try to get them. And they made the, the rendezvous special was a stainless 74. I really, really liked using that knife, but now that I don't use them as much, I don't get to, or I, really, I don't use them at all. So when I saw this, I decided to get one. You can see it's one of 13 in natural smooth white bone. Um, and I think all of these except for mine, I might be wrong on that, but um, at least most of these were store models. This one's not though. Uh, so you can see it has this really nice, un, you know, undyed, natural smooth white bone and uh, really well centered, no gaps or anything, and just a super smooth action as, as is often the case on um, GC stainless knives in general, but especially this run. Just super, super smooth, nice and snappy. Um, I got to meet Mike Latham, uh, Jamie of JSR Sports and More, Austin of Traditional Pocket Knives, um, Jay Roush of uh, Knife Ship Free, and I got to see Ken Mundick of uh, Blue Creek Cutlery and stuff. But one of the things, the reason I mentioned that uh, it was really nice to, to get to meet all those people in person, but also um, Mike Latham talks a lot about how he really likes that over travel at the half stop. And I think this has that more than any other GEC I've seen. So just a really nice knife, one that I got to use and uh, really happy to get. And what they do or what they've done, the, the, what they did this year for these knives is you can only buy one of the rendezvous specials. They actually took your name, your address, everything like that. Um, and that's, I think in part to see if people are, are, you know, flipping them immediately and stuff like that. But then you were allowed to buy one of the factory special assemblies, and then you were allowed to come back after the line had all gone through of people who were waiting in the morning. Um, they opened the door at 7 a.m. and uh, get another one. And then I believe you were allowed to do the same thing on the uh, proceeding days. But I just got this one. I, I actually did get another one. Um, but I got it for someone who couldn't be at the rendezvous and, um, you know, they paid me the price plus shipping and I shipped it to them. Um, so I didn't get to keep that one, but, uh, this was the factory special assembly I got. And then finally, kind of the main one here. Um, I just realized that they didn't have a front sticker on this. I didn't even realize that until right now, but this is the, uh, the rendezvous special. 
one of 50. Um, pattern number one, one, two, eight, one, one, nine, which is a number 12. It's a toothpick and LVS abalone. You can see these are signed by the new um, head of sales, Joan May Howard. Got to meet her, which was nice. I hadn't met her before in person. Um, so here is the Rendezvous special. Oh, you can see um, the 2019 Rendezvous pin. Everybody who went to the Rendezvous gets that. And then this is for the knife itself. And kind of the crown of the, the haul here. I hadn't had, I actually got a tip on what the knife rendezvous special would be, but it was incorrect. It was nowhere near this. Um, and I was happier that it was this because uh, what I thought it was gonna be was a 97. So I would have had two 97s that I wasn't planning to use. Um, but it's a pattern I haven't had before, the number 12. You can see it's uh, the number six of 50 and really nice LVS abalone, which means it's not looking glass. So the abalone is throughout the acrylic base rather than just being one layer of abalone and then an acrylic looking glass. Um, but really well made, super well centered, Pr tip is not proud, no gaps at all, and really nice action, no half stop, which I, I've come to like knives without half stops. Um, so just a really cool knife. Uh, I've hadn't had a toothpick pattern. Um, except for a Rough Rider a long time ago before this, at all, even outside of GC. So really excited to get this, and it's one that will go on my uh, stand that, that my wife got me to display, and uh, really good-looking one, especially I really like abalone. Anyway, so these are the knives that I got from the uh, Grayish Cutlery 2019 Rendezvous. Like I said, this is just a preview. I'll do full, you know, full videos and, and some articles on at least some of these knives. So don't forget to go out, go to knifethoughts.com and subscribe by entering your email. Also check, check out my uh, social media pages and, and follow me at knife thoughts on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr. And uh, don't forget to, to subscribe here on YouTube also. So you get updates when I post videos. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. And last but not least, don't forget to go out and do good.